Well, two bits of big Marvel news this week. First was the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer that dropped. And now we've got casting news on the 2015 Fantastic Four reboot. Interesting choices, so let's get to them. Michael B. Jordan is Johnny Storm, a.k.a. the Human Torch. Miles Teller will play Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic. Jamie Bell as Ben Grimm, a.k.a. the ever-loving blue-eyed thing. And now it's been announced that Kate Mara is reported to be the final choice as Sue Storm, a.k.a. the Invisible Woman. And there's your cast. Now I'm sure there's going to be a fair amount of fanboy outrage. And a lot of people are going to want to lay the blame on Disney. But this is actually not a Disney production. This is not a Marvel Studios Disney production. This is 20th Century Fox, which owns the rights to um, several Marvel properties. And uh, where it is that they're loaning the rights to certain characters, I guess on a the basis of movie to movie, we'll see how that works out. I don't know that this is going to fall into the greater Marvel Disney movie continuity. I don't think so. Just like Spider-Man. It's not going to be associated or affiliated with the Avengers timeline. I think a lot of people are going to critique this casting choice based on the ages of the actors and actress involved. Likely to be some unrest, some upset. I imagine right from the outset we're going to get some sort of adopted explanation for Johnny Storm. Michael B. Jordan. I feel as though if you're going to place him in this movie, the better casting choice would be possibly Ben Grimm. And the reason why I say that is because, in my opinion, Ben Grimm has always oozed a sort of Brooklyn streetwise persona. Uh, he was that kind of gritty, urban guy. And I'm not trying to uh, pigeonhole an actor based on their ethnicity, but it seems like it's a more appropriate choice. Um, Johnny Storm... I think maybe the director was watching the old cartoon show. Maybe that could be it. And because Brian Austin Green, who voiced Johnny Storm, uh, had a very checkered r rapping career. <laughs> Flame one. And on. On and on and on and on and on. They thought, hey, uh, rapper equals black eye. Let's get a black eye to play Johnny Storm. And... I think this is, I mean, you can call it diversity, but when you're always using the same formula, and I don't, if it's really about diversity, consider this. Um, from my perspective, as someone who is ethnically mixed, um, I think about diversity as a lot, lots in lots of different ways. How about an Asian Johnny Storm or an Indian Johnny Storm, or a uh, Johnny Storm with an amputated leg. Uh, I mean, all those things represent d diversity. They just want to appeal to a certain demographic, and that's all it is. And if they put the emphasis on great storytelling, they could pull this off with any cast. They could all be Japanese. I don't really think it matters. Certain people would decry, you know stupid things but you could make it work from what I can tell considering that the character rights were set to expire in April I think this is definitely a scramble to just retain legal rights to the characters so if they need to produce a quick bomb and even if they anticipate it being a bomb just so that they can maintain their lawful holding of of these characters that's what they're going to do 
Of course, you're going to have your two camps, as always. You're going to have that one camp who's like, they're characters I love, so despite any choices that are made, I'm going to love it regardless. And then you got the camp who I'm sure many people perceive me as being in that second camp. Um, as soon as an announcement is made, they just shit pan it. And I'm not panning anything until I see at least a trailer, some kind of finished product. But you can typically tell about these things. Again, the track record more or less says it all. And when you look at the people involved on the production side, the studio, it's a good indicator of what the future is going to hold. So, damn me if you will. Damn my opinions, if you will. But there's no denying that we've had a string of really shit movies. Marvel movies, especially. People say what they want about Avengers. Yeah, it was alright. It was pretty good. Um, but just like a lot of other Marvel stuff that's that's been released recently... The emphasis on, is on sort of a... Uh, they, keep, they keep playing up the comedy shtick. As if, hey, it's comic books, therefore it should be comical. No. And I say, uh, you need drama. There should be more emphasis on for towards the dramatic side. There should be more emphasis towards the human character, the human spirit, the feeling the deep emotions of these characters and what they represent. Marvel was way ahead of their time. When you consider X-Men, for example, people look at X-Men and they think, yay, cool, you know, people walking around blasting laser beams out of their eyes and their fingertips. And that was actually a vehicle of social commentary concerning the civil rights movement. You don't get that feeling when you watch those movies at all at all so I guess we're gonna see how this turns out because it's just about the flash it's just about the facade as long as the facade draws in the crowds and makes that dent in ticket sales that they're looking for Avengers billion dollars that's all they see it's all they see in their eyes just dollar signs Maybe we can get another billion dollar winner. When you walk onto set thinking, hey, how can we create a billion dollar winner instead of, how can I show the world, how can I tell the world a, a wonderful, heartwarming, dramatic, moving, emotionally stirring story about these four human individuals that get thrust into an extraordinary circumstance? You're doomed to fail. You're doomed to fail. And I feel fairly confident in saying that I don't want it to. I don't want it to suck, but the track record, that's all you can say. You just keep pointing back to that track record. You keep pointing back to it. You say, this is what you have. It's like that, that old car, man, that you know it's a beater car. You know that the battery constantly dies. So if you go for a ride to the store and the battery dies, what are you surprised about? You know it's a beater car. You know that the transmission could give out at any moment. It's like, well, maybe this time we'll make it from point A to point B intact. Maybe. Maybe. But your history shows, tells a different story. So, we'll see.